Hey guys, I'm back for episode 10. I've picked possibly the worst day to go out and take photos, because as you can see, the light is very bland and it's raining a bit. But yeah, give me a second, I'll show you what lens I've got. Okay, so today we have Minolta 300mm Rocker HF f4.5. Luckily I found a nice dry spot under an oak tree, perfect. Got this lens for only £30. As you can see it's a hefty serious bit of kit, all metal design and I really love the build quality. It is very heavy though, it's about 1.1-1.2 uh, kilos. Let me find the weight. Bling. There you go. This lens was released in 1969 so it's about 55 years old give or take um, but put a little bit of work in as I always say you'll be surprised how good the results are for this lens. Luckily I've had this lens for about six months so I'll be cutting to some sample video footage taken on this lens. Let's have a look at those samples. So I'm glad I tested the lens beforehand. So as you can see, weather's much better. You can see what the lens is really capable of. So it's pretty good. But as it's such a big, heavy lens, monopod is definitely recommended. So luckily it's got a built-in tripod collar, which is adjustable, so you can fully rotate that round. And a built-in lens head as well. Wait, how can I do this with one hand? There you go. Built-in lens head, very handy for sunny days. That's great. So for 30 quid, it's a, a bargain, I would say. I like the way the paint's worn off. Had a good life before I got a hold of it. Focus ring is a little bit stiff on this model, so it does make fast focusing a bit of a pain. But the aperture is nice and easy to change still, so that's all good. Anyway, let's uh, have a look how close we can get to this one. So later on in the video, we will be taking a deeper dive in Capture One. So if you like longer videos, this is a good one for you. Oh, this is a masterpiece. Stop down a bit. So one downside of this lens, when you are shooting wide open at f4.5, you do have a lot of chromatic aberration, which is a shame. But um, that's an easy fix if you just swap to black and white to get rid of it. But software is a lot better now at correcting these things. Let's try and get this duck coming up. Right, I think the light mist has stopped, so let's change location. As this lens is so old, it definitely does not have weather sealing, and any water on it is going to ruin it, and I quite like it, so... I found myself a little model. I've been invited to the bird party. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day there. The lighting's a bit bland. Let's go boot up Capture One and have an edit at some of the images and some I've taken a few months ago where the lighting was a lot better. Okay, so I've got Capture One booted up and this definitely isn't two weeks after I recorded the video. Let's have a quick look through some of my favourites. So this wasn't taken too long, less than a month ago actually. When was this? Back in 27th of October. These shots were in crop mode on my camera, so 18 megapixels, 450mm equivalent for these ones at the Kestrel. And to be honest, I'm very happy with the results of this one. Maybe a little bit soft, but still plenty of detail there. And you can definitely add your own flavor to the image to get the best of what you want, but definitely a good starting point. This one's a lot better. So I have made a few changes to this one already. Iris enhanced, a bit of brightness to make the Kestrel stand out a bit more. And a little bit of detail. Let me show you before. A little bit underexposed, but it's quite easy to recover. I could edit this a bit more, but I just quite like the look of it. I haven't gone over the top. Let's have a quick zoom in. But yeah, very happy with the details. Not razor sharp, but still plenty of detail to work with there. I like this one. I think I like this one better. For £30, it's, it, the lens worked out 10p per millimetre, so that's definitely good. Good focal range mileage there for you. What are you looking at? See the pupil? his nose, nostrils, individual strands, like this lens was released in 1969, 55 years old, and I think it holds its own. 
I'll go back and edit these at some point. As always, there will be a link to the images in the description below, both JPEGs and RAWs. Won't be all the images, but I'll try and pick the best ones, so feel free to have a look and play with those as well. And this was the best shot of the day, if I remember. And this is a good example to show you the um, colour fringing you get when you shoot wide open. So this would have been at f4.5. Purple fringing. Bosh, gun. It kind of leaves, it, leaves a bit of a halo around it though, but... Well, like I said before, the other option is go for black and white instead. So let's go, spells, presets. There you go, so... Ah, oh, here's our model from before. I like the natural colours, not the way it renders the image. Wouldn't really do much to this. Up the exposure slightly. Bit of contrast. Quick crop. So you could either go that way. 4x5. If I was posting to Instagram, I'd probably go 4x5, fill the whole page. Bit grumpy, so it's shot wide open again. So you do get this colour fringing. It's not the end of the world, but it's just one downside if you're going to shoot wide open. When seen back out, you don't really notice. Ah, this was definitely a good test as well. So I think I made a few quick edits to this one. Let's have a look. Uh, just exposure and contrast of it. So before and after. Not even any clarity. So this this is pretty much straight out of camera. The image quality you can get. Okay, great. Yes, yeah, so you can see the bird's eye. Nice detail. The individual strands on the feathers with water droplets. More structure. Quite easy to do, it's probably a bit over the top. But yeah, this lens definitely gives you a good base image, and then from there you can really make the picture shine with a bit of editing. Nice one of a swan, haven't done much to this one either. I think just boost the exposure and a bit of contrast. Zoom in to see those details. So a little bit of colour fringing at the edges there. But nice detail still. Maybe ever so slightly out of focus, but again, I really love the way it renders the image natural looking, not too clinical and sharp. Here's one of a mallard duck, I believe, with the exposure up. Again, great, nice natural colours, a little bit of finer details. So ISO is quite high here, 3200, so you're going to lose a bit of detail, but it still holds up really well, the image. So if you see this lens for 30 quid, definitely buy it. If you're prepared to carry it around, because it's quite a big boy, you'll definitely get some good images. And this one, got a few more images. This were taken about five months ago, back in June, I believe. 23rd of June, so about five months ago. Okay, I think this is my favorite image I've taken so far of this lens. So I haven't done much of this one, just boost the exposure slightly. Not a lot, and then a bit of iris and heart just to make that eye pop. Oh, and some clarity as well. I could probably put that down a bit if I wanted, so that's straight out of our camera. Didn't even need the clarity, to be honest. But yeah, very impressed with this lens. Would be nice to have a, a modern lens and a super good autofocus for wildlife, but I do find a great sense of achievement when you kind of manually focus it yourself, taking the time and got the image. That's what I really enjoy about vintage lenses as well. Here's one of it face on. Herons look very strange face on. Not something I'm used to seeing. Oh, I didn't notice that before. Is that all bug? Or... So here I've just walked around 180 degrees, get the sun from behind. A little bit hazy, I think this was wide open, you've got the fringing as well, but still, still a good image. Alright then, I think we'll show you a few more and that will be the end of the video. Definitely more lens reviews coming. I'm thinking of doing the Minolta, I know, Minolta again, 58mm f1.4. But I'm also planning to do a review on the Helios 44M 58 f2. So thank you for watching.